Thank you very much for that. I think it was fairly clear. Councillor Newman. I can't believe that we are spending several hours today talking about amendments based on pulling the debt lever. I just can't believe that. Borrowing your way to prosperity is no solution. It is like trying to run the council's budget like an afterpay app. That's what's being proposed. Crumbling assets that need to be renewed, proper asset stewardship. That is why we have to fund depreciation. And I'm sorry, but that is most, my, my constituents are most definitely not asking me to borrow more money uh, for the purpose of funding the operating cost of this organisation, which will be paid for by not maintaining our assets properly. And they see what we're doing in the Woody Licensing Trust space. We are properly renewing assets. And they're saying to me, why can't you do that with council-owned assets? The answer is that we're continuing to run a balance sheet which is based on funding groceries through debt rather than paying for the depreciation of our assets. And that has to stop. And I have to say, Councillor Fully, I respect you, but I'm looking at this draft budget and I'm seeing a whole lot more short-term debt for one year. What comes the year after that? And the year after that? And the year after that? The reality is the costs that are described in the proposal, proposed amendments, they are operating costs and they're not one year only. They have to be paid every year. And I don't see that solution. That what is being talked about, a conversation about the long-term plan, the long-term plan will not be a conversation. The long-term plan will be a, a fix-up job for the stuff that we don't do properly now and for the costs that are just kicked down the road for another 12 months. So um, I think that I think that depreciation is the worst lever to pull. Been better off, frankly, to just propose an amendment to hike the rates up uh, in order to pay for some of this, and that's not going to get, going to get passed. So, um, Councillor Fully, respectfully, I don't know about you, but I am very nervous about the scale of the changes in that long-term plan, and I think if there's someone around this table this morning who has articulated the best, it's actually Councillor Henderson who has had the foresight to say no, because if we don't act now, um, you won't have a choice in that long-term plan discussion. The mitigations that are coming will be far more expensive to your constituents and mine um, than, um, than, than what could otherwise be achieved. Um, I hope that we're not going to have debates along these lines all morning, because frankly, the debt lever is no solution. Thank you very much for that. Councillor Baker. Oh, look, I'd absolutely endorse uh, what Councillor Newman said. And, well, that's something you don't hear every day. But uh, also, um, I just want to acknowledge um, the comments of Councillor Henderson, Councillor Sayers and the Deputy Mayor um, thus far. Um, absolutely agree. I mean, no surprise, I don't support the use of debt or hiking rates. Um, made that fairly clear yesterday. Um, and, and I also just want to acknowledge, I think, this through this whole annual plan process, but today as well, the objective and quality advice we've had from our staff. And I'm not one to buy into conspiracy theories. We are part of a team, and they have, I believe, I've been sitting in here most of the time as a local board chair for 12 years, listening to annual plan debates and long-term plan debates, and um, interesting on some of the decisions, and quite right, Councillor Watson, about heads being hang, hung in shame on occasions. But I just want to say, I believe this year the, the quality of advice has been outstanding, and I want to you know, publicly, I guess, thank the staff, because I found it incredibly useful, and I've sat there with an open mind from day one, and uh, it's allowed me to form my opinion now. Um, look, I... Basically, I'm, as, as has been said by the likes of Councillor Newman, to borrow our way out of a financial hole is, is quite unbelievable. It is neither sustainable, credible or wise, in my view. And, you know, we know, when we talk about rates, we know what that means. It's been made clear to us what that means for next year. We cannot just put blinkers on 
and think about this year only. We've done that enough. And Councillor Williamson, I'm a bit of a visual person. I like your, uh, your graphs and your information. I think sometimes we just get in our own way by trying to stop being informed. And so I appreciate the fact that you put up. I look forward to Council Philippina's history lesson and pictures later um, to take the place of the history lesson <laughs> thus far. Um, but um, look, you know, I will not be supporting this amendment. It is a huge step backwards. It's sort of ironic that it's coming from the people figuratively to my right, but who, who come to this council with, with a Labour Party banner, and I look at the government. Um, oh, sorry, I would, okay. So I look at the government's uh, responsible, I didn't think it was a secret, um, the government's responsible lending policy that was to prevent vulnerable people from putting themselves into, uh, into dodgy situations with lending. And I don't think we're vulnerable, but I think, you know, you could apply that to us. So uh, I will not be supporting it and uh, endorse what's been said by some of my colleagues. Thank you very much for that. Councillor Hills, please. Thank you. <coughs> Thank you, Mayor. Um, this is a, a interesting vibe for me because I was... Uh, annoyed that I couldn't bring my own uh, PowerPoint presentation because I would have shown Councillor Williamson why we have increased rates slightly higher than inflation for the last 10 years because for decades and decades, councils have not invested in the infrastructure we needed for this city. They have not invested in the depreciation and they have not invested in the interest payments for that debt. Debt is okay when we're building new assets. And guess what? When I got on this council, we had a 2015 long-term plan which put $18 billion in capital um, over the 10 years. In 2021, we passed a budget that put $32 billion into uh, capital. The reason why rates were starting to travel up, but obviously if you look at this budget, weren't high enough to cover the cost of what we're doing, is because we're investing. And my PowerPoint presentation would have shown the trains and the stations and the new builds of leisure centres and the things that we've done and replaced. This, the central, um, the city rail link, the central interceptor, the, the huge amounts of investment in pump stations and all the sorts of things that people have been complaining about. The Te Ara Awataha, which is a huge, amazing uh, project in Northcote, which stopped the flooding in that area because we spent tens of millions working with the government to do. There are countless examples of where we are getting to investing in infrastructure. But we made a choice to borrow for new assets because councils before us did not. So some of that debt, a lot of that debt is our choice to invest in the future. My problem with this amendment is that it pushes more into the operational space, which leaves a gaping hole in next year. And as I said yesterday, I cannot sit here and do this to our staff again, to our city again, to our organisations who literally came up to me the last few months saying, we are thinking about making staff redundant in the environment space, in our community organisations. Our local boards were losing significant amounts of funding. There is only one option, and, and for the people who think that it's going to be magical, this amendment only gives us 6.7% rates increase, so you're telling me that the amendment actually is a percentage less than the mayor's, but also we're putting, this will lead us when we put those targeted rates back in to 15.7%, and I know the numbers around here are not for 15.7%. I know the numbers are barely here for the 7.7%, for the, um, because Julie Ferry and others have asked. She said, if we don't sell the shares, w would people support the rates to cover it? And there were very few people that said that, and there definitely wasn't 11 votes. So we are at an issue. I've lost votes around this term, including what I believe is a mean-spirited one on discretionary spending, which took away traps and seedlings from our volunteers. It took away Anzac Day wreaths. It took away our coffee machines for our staff, the very one little benefit they get for working here. It took away professional development. So I was on the losing side of that vote. So I know if what Morris and others have planned to fill that gap, because I know that the, the, the rates won't be there to cover it, 
I will lose a vote on hundreds of millions of dollars of cuts next year. I know that. So if I don't make a good decision here today to fill that gap with either revenue or something, we're going to lose more jobs and the people who have come to me in tears who are up for jobs being lost or think they are finding a new job because they're sick of the lack of vision and, and the constant cuts, it's four years of it. You know, the mental health in this place is not good. And if, if you've missed that, you need to go talk to staff from any department, any CCO. And if we don't make a good decision here and we, we fill that gap with debt and, and we leave another hole and we tell the public, hey, please tell us what you love. Tell us what we need to save again next year. I think that is not a good thing. We will not protect our environment. We will not bring those targeted rates back. And I know I'll be on the losing vote of significant cuts again. Because I've heard in workshops what people think of departments, what people think of our staff, what people think of the things we do that I believe is important to invest in the city. So if we don't make a good decision today, we are leaving that up to someone else. Um, and I won't support those cuts, but I know there won't be the votes for the rates to cover it. So I'm sorry I can't support this. I understand what you're trying to do, but it's really, really concerning that we're sending ourselves into another big hole. Thank you very much for that. Uh, Councillor Walker. Sure. Um, so I've, I've heard a number of um, comments around the room and, and all of us are, are in the same solution space. That is, mm. we want the best for Auckland. One of the fairly unique things about councils is they exist in perpetual succession. So in 100 years' time, there will be a bundle of people that won't be us, but they'll also be considering the future of this uh, city and it'll be somewhat um, different. But having said that, um, where we are now is built on the legacy of our forefathers, our city fathers, the people that have invested in this uh, city, the people that built this building, for example. And I think uh, we should be immensely grateful to Legacy Manukau, Sir Barry Curtis in particular, Legacy Auckland City and the other councils that put in place the investments that have enabled us to get where we are and get through the difficulties we have now. And I'll come back to that in a minute. But certainly, in the past, councils have had a handle on expenditure. And as Morris Williamson pointed out, our expenditure relative to our income is out of control. And if there is something that a rating in, uh, a, a rater looks like, like Moody's or, or the like, it's actually your expenditure and how sustainable you are. And it actually surprises me that we receive um, information from officers uh, over time, frankly, that has not been prudent. That is my personal view. So that is what we need to get in control of, more so than anything else. It's even more important than debt, because if your expenditure is out of control, then you're going to end up in a worse off position. What really concerns me in terms of timing is our, our, our city fathers would not have made a, a long-term decision like this um, so quickly. They would have been far better informed than what we are. I've asked a number of questions about um, investments around what a diversified fund would look like going into the future, and we have not had that information here. I put to you, if we had $2 billion and we were generating, let's say, 10%, return on that a year, maybe more than that. That's 200 million, maybe 300 million dollars a year. What difference would that make to this city going forward? What would a diversified fund like that make in terms of our rainy day provision for dealing with things into the future? How much would that enhance our credit standing? And so on. And Aucklanders' confidence in our future. Now we have had not had that conversation, and this motion at least gives us the opportunity to have that discussion in the long-term plan where it is best considered. As far as the airport is concerned, we have no need to move on this quickly. It is a rock-solid investment. It's giving a dividend this next year. That dividend will go up significantly. I would suggest it will go up in capital appreciably over the next year and we would be far better off to retain it until a position where we're in a sound position to consider all the merits, which we are not now. 
the suggestion by Lotu and others is a balanced budget. Yes, it does push up debt. But debt relatively is coming down to revenue. That's what the forecast is. And if we had a diversified fund, we'd be able to pay it down much quicker because it's not going to come down more quickly otherwise. I would say that. And this notion of scare tactics and the like around the next year is, I think, a misnomer. Uh, a mis misnomer. We can get a handle on our expenditure, and it does not have to mean cuts to services if we're smart. So I support this motion. I think it's prudent. It's the way forward so that we've got all the information at our fingertips, which we do not have now. Um, Mayor, Mayor Brown, sorry to interrupt. Um, could I just make a quick apology to Morris? I singled him out, and he wouldn't do that to me, and he's allowed his opinion. Um, apologies for doing that, Councillor Williamson. I'm sure Councillor Williams has broad shoulders. And um, thank you for following that uh, little bit of wishful thinking. We'll go on to Councillor Ferry, please. All right. Um, probably not going to be as impatient as some of my colleagues. Uh, yeah, let's see where we go. So um, I just first wanted to note um, that uh, the parents and ancestors of the city we have today um, were not just fathers. Uh, and also um, I wanted to particularly acknowledge the gifts of mana whenua that have brought us to this place today. Um, what I see playing out here is the key dichotomy, I think, that, that plays out in the politics of our city and has for many years, which is the, the tension between those who want council to cost less and those who want council to achieve more. And I'm not putting a value judgment on, I mean, obviously, you know, I pick one of those sides, but I'm not putting a value judgment on either of them at this point. I think that's the key dividing line when we have all of these debates. And... This year, it is probably more uh, finely balanced than it has been in the past. And so that is part of the challenge around the table and why there are some interesting um, political alliances forming. For me, I'm not scared of putting up rates, and I've mentioned that before. And uh, thank you, uh, Councillor Hill, sorry to single you out, um, for, for mentioning my attempts to have those conversations. As has been pointed out, one of the reasons why our rate increases have been more than CPI is because of the lack of investment. And uh, in the part of the city that I was on the local board for for 12 years, uh, I saw that lack of investment um, going back to the Auckland City Council days and indeed some, in some cases Mount Roskill Borough Council days um, writ quite clearly. Every time we did um, a car park project, not my favourites car parks, but... Um, some people use them, I use them myself sometimes, uh, we would discover that the foundations had not been adequately laid. And so it would cost us a whole lot more to renew that asset than we thought because corners were cut when it was built. And those corners were cut to make council cost less, not to achieve more. I can give many examples in that space. We had a um, roof of the Wesley Community Centre, the only community centre in um, Mount Roskill supported by the council, uh, which failed after only 10 years. And it failed because Auckland City had sweated that asset, cut the maintenance budget, and we couldn't go the, um, either the installer of the uh, roof or the people who made the product because they had voided the warranty through cutting the maintenance budget. So. Costing less has consequences, and it has had a lot of consequences in my neck of the woods. When we think about the impact of rates on the cost of living, there are several elements to uh, cost of living type indexes like the CPI. There's food, there's shelter, transport, energy, clothing, healthcare and childcare. Those are the ones commonly used internationally. So cost of living, rates speaks to the shelter portion, right? We know that internationally, the affordable level of rates in terms of as a percentage of household income is around 5% of a household income. 
our rates have been consistently well under this, and even if we went to 12.7% rates, which is the number I would prefer, would still be well under 4%. I think it works out at 3.51, something like that. It's 3.5 at the moment. By far, the greater contribution to the cost of living issues around the cost of shelter specifically are not rates. They are around things like rents, which are actually set more by what the market will bear. Yes, landlords will pass on rates increases. They always do. But what they're actually doing is setting them based on a shortage of housing, which again goes back to underinvestment and bad decisions in the past. Whew. What also we would potentially increase for cost of living were we to reduce services and make cuts, whether it's this year or next year or in the future, would be to increase the cost of transport, to potentially increase the cost of childcare, and to increase the other components of shelter as well. So I don't buy the argument that rates is the only thing that we're doing that can potentially put the cost of living up. There's a lot of other stuff that we have an influence on that influences the cost of living. I want to finally turn to the issue about the ECE. I've been a staunch supporter for the ECE uh, sector, and I'm kind of disappointed with the approach that's been taken with this amendment, partly because I'd been working on a compromise which I thought people were on board with, and this was a surprise, but also because it doesn't acknowledge the wish of local boards to get the revenue, in particular the Otara Papatoitoi local board, which said they wanted to exit regional service. I'll leave it there. Thank you. Thank you very much, Councillor Ferry. Councillor Barclay. Thank you. Um, I did send through a PowerPoint because I was inspired by Councillor Williamson. No so I'm hoping it can go up. <laughs> Thank you. Um, tēnā koutou katoa. <laughs> I only have two slides. Um, but tēnā koutou katoa. Ta lofa lava. Ni hao. Um, I, I actually want to thank the Mayor for making us really look at what is important to us. So much so that we've had to kind of align with people we would never think we would. Um, and I think that that's pretty, that's pretty cool. You know, like, we all have different opinions. We all have different things that we value. We're all representing our communities um, and, and trying to do the best that we can. And so um, that's because you made us do that. So aside from your put downs, You've made us do this, so that's pretty cool. Thank you. Um, so, yeah, representing my community, the very community that some of you speak about who are struggling, and, and, and we all know it. You know, uh, we've all got residents in our areas that, that are still living in their cars because they can't afford a home, people who are renting, people who do own their homes, and everybody is struggling. And I know this. We're talking about food. I deliver food parcels, and I know... I'm now delivering food parcels to areas that are the flash parts of my area. So I do acknowledge uh, many are struggling. I put this up because this is from the Auckland plan. And if we had a budget that focused on this, we wouldn't be putting up the cuts that we're putting up the cuts first. All Aucklanders will be part of and contribute to society, access opportunities and have the chance to develop to their full potential. The areas of council that look at servicing this for us are the ones that are being put up to be cut, uh, that address the inequity in our city. Um, you know, the, the vibrancy, yes, the arts, the, the, the culture, the events, our community funding, our regional services, our safety um, services that they provide the leadership and collaboration, those were all put up to be cut first. Please do not tell me that they are going to be saved because they were not secured in this budget. They were put up to be saved on the basis that we sell the, the airport shares. So they, they are not valued, they are not protected. Um, and so that's why I put this, this up. I ask myself, what is my job here? And I look to the Local Government Act. A local authority should ensure prudent stewardship and the efficient and effective use of its resources in the interests of its region. Efficient and effective use of its resources. In order to look forward, uh, I need to look back. And so I look at the airport company established in 1988 with local government in Auckland owning 51%. Since then, North Shore City sold its shares 
Uh, Franklin City Council sold its shares. I think you got like 14.2 million. North Shore got like 2.6 million to reduce debt, to reduce the plan rates rises, um, and to kind of do your investment accounts. Rodney District Council sold their shares. Papakura District Council sold its allocation. Uh, why Takati City sold its shares, Auckland City retained some, Monaco City debated selling shares to clear its debt and invest the remainder. The exact same position we are in now, selling to pay down debt. But Monaco, Auckland, they kept them and now these shares are worth $2.2 billion. My point is, shares were sold to pay down debt. How is that working? with a debt that is now $12 billion. So here we are again, and my next slide is this. Insanity, doing the same thing over and over again and expecting different results. So the shares were sold, debt was paid down, and we are back here again talking about selling shares to pay down debt. We, if we sell these, even though it's partial, we learned yesterday that partial opens the door to full. And we've done it before with the diversified investment fund that you, you mentioned, Councillor Watson. So what needs to change is thinking that selling the shares is going to be the circuit breaker, is going to be the thing that makes a difference when actually holding onto them has. And it's thanks to those public servants and politicians back in the day that had the foresight to hold on to these shares. We owe them a debt of gratitude for their long-term thinking to safeguard these assets for future generations, in fact, so that we could be in the position that we're in now to have this debate. So I thank them for their foresight and not looking to it to be some kind of circuit breaker when, as I've just mentioned, it is not a circuit breaker. It's something that was looked at in the past, done in the past. It's not bold and brave. In fact, it's just trying to do something that we tried to do before that didn't really work. So in a way, it's kind of lazy. So it's a short-term fix, knee-jerk reaction that sells out our future generations. Thank you. Thank you for that. Uh, Councillor Philippina, rather. Sorry. Oh, good. Thank you, Your Worship. Firstly, I think I need to to address the, 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 the Labour comment, and, and I'm going to do that, um, and proud to be in this position as a Labour candidate. Proud. Um, but proud with only 18 of the 19 years I've been here, because I got in as independent. So, Your Worship, I also have a lot of respect for um, Councillor Baker, and will, even after and during this. And the reason, the reason I mention that, the reason I mention that is because, Your Worship, for me, local government, central government, two totally different beasts. And so my decisions I have made in the 19 years I've been here have always been for my community. Hence, 38 and a half years in the police in counties Monaco. And um, I can tell you now that I am fully supportive of this recommendation. Why? What I've heard so far around the, this particular table is interesting, Your Worship and, and, and colleagues, and that is people have been mentioning debt. People have been mentioning rates and the impact it will have. This particular one is actually lower than um, the mayoral proposal. Um, so I'm, I'm, I'm thinking, why are you then saying, oh, look, you know, it's going to have a big effect on our community when I think uh, I understand that the, 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 the rate, the residential rate is, is less than what we have for the proposal yesterday, I think, Councillor Fully. So, I mean, I, I'm, I'm hearing everybody talk about rates, um, but this is less. Um, when you talk about debt, and the reason I asked the questions of John Bishop, and also I asked of, um, if, if, if I have, a, um, with, with, with our finance team, the reason I asked those questions around the debt ceiling is because of the $900 million hole that we ended up facing in that emergency budget. budget. Guess who put us through that? And guess who took us out into the light, for want of a better term? The Deputy Mayor, along with her finance team and with the councillors around this particular table. 
So, Desi, I congratulate you on that because that $900 million one, I can tell you, um, had a lot of debate around this particular chamber. But you took us through as finance chair and everything else, so I applaud you for that. This particular hole that we're facing now, again, I asked the questions yesterday. This is not of either our staff or our making. This is why I went through when we ended up looking at the 295 when we had 90 million identified. Nothing to do with anything around the words I'm hearing, mismanagement. There's nothing to do with that. We inherited it. Because Worship, the mayor didn't inherit it. None of the councillors here inherited it. We all inherited that. 90 million was identified. We then ended up getting, as I pointed out, um, you had uh, higher interest rates, costs, reduced uh, profitability, reduced reserve projections. We inherited it. And we are going to see uh, our way through that now. And this is the way that we get ourselves through it, is, is, is with this recommendation. And I'm... Um, Councillor Bartley, I'm glad you mentioned that the, the sale uh, and, and which legacy council sold because I'm not going to go through that because my colleague on the left said if I did, he was going to walk out. So I'm, gonna, I'm not going to even go back on the history. So thank you for that history. But look, I, I, I just needed to put, put one thing on the table in regards to that. This is about the airport shares. And, and I will have, your, your Worship, I will have a PowerPoint. I'm still trying to do it now. Um, when we end up, depending on how we get on with this, I will be. I will be voting for this because this is the right thing to do. And um, my last comment, well, no, there might be some more depending on how long I've got left before the bell. Oh. <laughs> so my last comment is this. Councillor Ferry, you mentioned renters. You mentioned them, and I totally agree, because everybody in, in the areas that we have across Tamaki and Mokoda are paying rent. But guess what happened with the food? 41,000 people that ended up going this. They ended up, the majority, ended up saying, we're OK with the debt, we're OK, especially with the sale of the airport chairs. 59. Thank you, Kilda. Thank you. Thank you for that, Councillor Leone, please. Kilda, um, I want to start by just saying that I will be supporting this. Um, and I just also want to continue with the corridor that I started with yesterday by saying this is not the right time to look at one of our most significant assets we have, especially when we know the shares are predicted for the $40 million dividend and the value that the shares have increased since we started this discussion. I want to go back about the rates and talk about the rates. There are some cities in in Aotearoa that have gone up to 18% because they didn't increase their rates sooner. I am concerned um, that in previous um, terms that they weren't increased sooner. Wellington's gone up by 13% and others have mentioned that unfortunately we know we would not have had the numbers for that to pass here. If we look at the partial sale, this, then this will only solve the problem for this year's budget. And I also support the concerns that Councillor Henderson has raised, specifically around West Auckland. I absolutely agree with the concerns highlighted. I'm just asking that we go into those discussions with everything on the table when we go into the LTP. We do not have a clearly set out plan on this billion dollars. If we did, and if we knew, exactly that it was going to go on the things that were highlighted by Councillor Henderson, then I think it would be a very different discussion. The impact of the floods will go on for years, but we don't need to solve it today. There are a number of other assets we should consider selling in the long-term plan. We've heard about the golf courses, we've heard about a number of other things, but I believe that we have not been given all of that information to make the best informed decisions that we can as councillors. 
After discussions with the experienced financial advisors, we were informed that we could go above our debt ceiling as long as we have a clear plan to address this within a clear time frame. And I believe that we can do that. What I'm saying is I'm not ruling out having discussions about selling the shares in the future, even in the near future, but to have all of those things on the table and to weigh that up clearly. I agree that we have to cut back and we need to continue to cut back in certain areas, given our costs outweigh our revenue and inflation. But again, that in-depth discussion, sh discussion should be in LTP. We can discuss all those options there. I'll end my court at all with the struggle is real, but let's not address this by selling one of our most significant assets. Let's lay it all on the table, work as a team to look at every single option we have before we sell this critical asset that we have for our city, Tamaki Makoto, that was first discovered by mana whenua here many years ago that we continue to work in co-governance with. And my final concern that I want to highlight about the alternative is mana whenua and the option of them selling the airport shares. I'm very uncomfortable with the fact that that has not been prioritised in the discussions and I know that we will be able to, you know, there may be an option to dis discuss that later. But I think, again, we need that additional time through LTP. If we are going to be true to our relationship with mana whenua here in Tamaki Makoto to ensure we are doing our best to sell our assets to mana whenua as point of, point of um, first refusal rather than just diving into this decision straight away today. Kia ora. Thank you very much for that. Councillor Lee, please. Thank you, thank you, Mr. Mayor and, and members. Um, I, I commended you, Mr. Mayor, for, for the display of leadership during that long day yesterday. And I listened carefully to your advice this morning about your willingness to compromise and that we should be willing to compromise. Um, I can tell you my first response to the airport um, sale proposal was to have a showdown and, and vote it down and throw it out, as has happened apparently in here in the past. However, um, we, we need to um, bear in mind that uh, Councillor uh, Fully's amendment is very much a compromise because it keeps your original proposal intact, but it places, us, places it where it should be properly addressed, and that is in the long-term plan. Um, in terms of leadership, out of, out of this crisis, I see uh, another leader of the future emerging Mr. Mayor, and, and, and that is Councillor Fully. Um, I've been polit in politics for over 30 years in Auckland, and so I think I see talent. Um, I know talent when I see it. The, the English statesman Edmund Burke once said that society is a contract between three interested parties, the living, the dead, the ancestors, and the unborn, the future generations. And if any issue pertains to Edmund Burke's social contract, this airport, the, the shares of which were bequeathed to us by Aucklanders of the past and should be used to benefit the people of, of the people of, of Auckland now, the living, and should be handed on to future generations. I just want to, to make the point that addressing this question in the long-term plan, other councillors have made this point also, and that will enable us to look at all the contributing factors um, regarding our, our financial budget challenge that we have uh, in, front of, in front of us in the present day. Um, it will enable a comprehensive 
and systematic examination of our whole uh, budget. And, you know, while we were arguing about a, a million here or, or a point of a rates rise there, um, we're talking about a record budget. There's no, there's no mystery about why there's a deficit. We have, we have advocated, the, our advisors have advocated, and you, Mr. Mayor, a, a spend up of 3.6 billion in, in, in OPEX and, and 2.8 billion in CAPEX, and the whole debate has been focused on Kauri Kids and CAB and local board cuts and library hours when the bulk of the spending has been kept away, not only from the councillors, but from, from the public. And next year, uh, we have the chance in the coming next month, beginning next month, we have the chance to do what you have advocated in your election campaign, a fundamental examination and change to the way we do things here in this council. Rushing to judgment, rushing to the market now, um, as we've been advised to, um, it is not is not prudent. If anything is prudent, it's not that. If anything is imprudent, is a bulk sale of all all our shares on the first of July, and that's what we've been advised. Um, can I say that there are a number of concerns? There are another good, apart from the positive aspects of getting all the information that we need before we make a decision. There are some disquieting concerns about this proposed selling these shares right now. There is concern about the way we've gone about it, that in terms of the Local Government Act, our requirements under Section 82, um, 83, um, in terms of, of consultation, in terms of the special consultative procedure, the fact of the matter is there's no formal resolution to adopt the special consultative procedure. The way we've conducted this annual plan is just like any other annual plan, uh, very much like um, have your say and the council will have its way, which I mentioned yesterday. Um, even in terms of the discussion we had on the 15th of February, when one of the councillors here, or some of the councillors here, argued for a formal hearing. And I guess because we didn't adopt the special consultative procedure at that critical meeting, um, councillors were able to say, perhaps without realising it, um, that they didn't want to be sitting in a room listening to the public all day and it was unfair to expect our high paid staff to be sitting in, in, in this chamber listening to people all day, overlooking the fact that this was a special consultative procedure. That's challengeable, if anything's challengeable in the courts. So I, I, I think it would be very wise to take um, this amendment on board. Everything remains intact. Work could begin next month on a, a thorough review. And I think that is the way to deal with this. I just want to pay tribute before I close to the, the foresight of the regional leaders, the, the mayors and councillors. Uh, first of all, those leaders who built the airport in the first place for future generations. And those mayors of the past, um, including the one on my right, councillor, Councillor Fletcher, former Mayor of Auckland, who handed those shares on. And I want to note in particular Dame Kath Tizard and also especially Sir Barry Curtis. Sir Barry Curtis, Can you wrap it up, perhaps please? of all the, all the leaders, was the most passionate and still is concerned about the legacy of the airport shares. And his, his wish is to see those shares handed on to future generations. And he's calling for our support, and I think he deserves it. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, thank you for that. Um, I do have to say that this process has not been rushed. It has been anything but rushed. In fact, I proposed my first one in December last year, and I may not even get to even have it voted on yet. 
thank you for that. Well, Councillor, Councillor Fletcher. Councillor Foley's process is going to be even less rushed. Your Worship, um, one of the best things to come out of the budget thus far, and not just you exercising the considerable patience that we are all surprised with, but is the way in which we've been able to all work together on this and stick to the issues and, and not have a, you know, getting drawn into personalities. So I, I really welcome the determination that everyone is expressing to get all of these issues onto the long-term plan. And let's just hope that that is what occurs. So I've got enormous... Um, sadness that I am not going to be supporting you with this amendment because I know, Councillor Lotu, it is a really genuine attempt to address the difficult situation we are in. So I, I feel sad about that. But ultimately, we all have to exercise and own the votes that we will cast. And right now, I my judgment, my instinct, is that we have to preserve our position in terms of some debt headroom. We don't know what is going to befall us in the next little while. And I need to be consistent with my role that I have on the audit committee, where I've been one of those who have really encouraged officers to have to come before us and have complete disclosure in terms of risks. So. Um, it was solely on that basis yesterday I indicated my support for some small share of sales to be sold. I, I want to tell some of you, Councillor Lee has referred to the fact, I almost bought a cartoon in today of me saving the airport shares because I had to fight to save those airport shares. But that's not the real reason why it really hurt to make that concession yesterday. My late father, some of you might have known, Ted Lees. He was a World War II veteran. He was part of the original Hush Hush, which became the S SAS. The, the. He served through Italy. Um, he, he served for years on the Harbour Board. And he always told me, never let those airport shares go. He never let it go because for a small island nation like New Zealand, our airport, you know, it's, it's a monopoly. And when he was dying, I spent a long time with him and talking about things. In fact, he stretched his death out. He wanted to die on Armistice Day. But we talked about the airport shares. Now, obviously, we know strategically we can't control the outcome of the airport, but I will still keep fighting that we have... Um, a block of shares there. So for me to make that concession yesterday was immense, perhaps disregarded by some people. So I want to foreshadow my support for the amendment that Councillor Darby um, has proposed from 8% to 6.5. I know that it's been scrutinised by officers. I know that legals have had a look at it. I know it's inside the scope of what we consulted on, but furthermore, I know that it doesn't entail any further rate increase for the coming year. And unlike Councillor Ferry, I am hearing from people on a regular basis of the difficult circumstances that they are finding themselves in, and I don't believe that we can go further than the, the Mayor is proposing. Um, for those people in my ward on fixed incomes, then, and all of us will have email boxes just full, but I just can't bring myself to think that we're going to impose further hardship on them. I think the greatest thing we can do today is to bring certainty and credibility to Aucklanders and to our funding partners, is to demonstrate that we uh, will have operating expenses below income, and that's got to be our collective goal. And Councillor Lotu, through you, Mr Mayor, I really welcome working with you on the LTP, but I can't support your amendment today. No, thank you for that, Councillor. Um, Councillor Turner, please. Thank you very much, Mr Mayor. Thank you, everybody. I've listened intently again, and we have so much in common amongst all of us. I listened to um, 
Councillor Sayers, who stirred me and put steel in my spine, and then I listened to Councillor Watson, who stabbed me in the heart, because he's right, and I understand. But we talk about investment, investment, not enough investment. There's plenty of investment. It's just that one, to two, one third to a half of it is going up in smoke with everything we do. We're not getting traction on the ground. And until we fix how we're spending the money on the ground, we're not going to fix any of this stuff, no matter what our decision is. There's tradies out there, there's people walking the street every day saying, what the hell are they did it like this for? Why did they do it this way? Why does this bit need doing when that bit needs doing? There is a bridge in West Auckland right now, which is being painted. And I understand the cost of painting it, of painting it, is almost the construction cost 20 years ago. And it's not because the paint's gone up and it's not because the labour's too dear. It's because our processes are yeah. sinking productivity. So, John, I'm sorry, but you know I've flip-flopped around all over the place, um, and I genuinely have come to this with an open mind. But the mayor has come to this with a compromise, and so will I. I want to move on, and I want us to all work at getting what the fundamental thing down there on the ground is. What's wrong? We need to get that right. And it's not about being counter-talk. It's about getting back to our constituents and asking them to tell us what we need to be doing. So I'll be not voting for you, Councillor Foley. I'm sorry. I will be voting for the Mayor's option. Councillor Stewart, I believe you... Yes, well, I've been listening to everybody, and this is a really, really hard decision for me. And, you know, I listened to Councillor Watson and what he had to say really moved me, just as it did Councillor Turner and a lot of us around here. But unfortunately, I won't be able to support this, um, Councillor um, uh, Lottie. I won't, won't be able to support your amendment. And the day of reckoning will be the day that the, the, the rates demands go out to everybody. And if the rates go up, there's going to be a lot of people that are out there that are really, really struggling. There's a lot of elderly people. There's a lot of young people that have mortgaged themselves to the hilt. And for a lot of those people, a lot of them, they may have to end up selling their homes and mortgagee sales and all sorts of things because Everything is costing, and every time a rate or, or another fee goes goes up there for somebody, it's really tipping people over the edge. So I've, I've really been listening, and, and I know that there's a couple of other amendments, and I'm going to be listening to those as well, but unfortunately I won't be able to support your amendment today. Sorry. Thank you very much. It seems to come to the end of those who wish to speak. Um, with regard to Lottie's amendment, I acknowledge that you've put a fair bit of work into this amendment. I'll make a brief content comment on it. The Cantar survey, which is the more scientific part of the survey, had on the sale of the shares 24% to sell at all, but 52%, the largest number of all of them, were to sell only some of its shares. So think about that. We've all claimed that they've got the backing for you, but of the Kantar survey, 52% sell, sell some of its shares. Borrowing to fund our operating expenditure is what has got us into this trouble, and we have to stop. Thank you, Councillor Bartley, for that picture of the gentleman who said not to do the same thing again and again. We have borrowed our way into this. This is not a borrowing competition. I'm uncomfortable with the amount of debt we are using, even in my proposal. But it is balanced against paying down a billion dollars of debt, which is not the case in this amendment. I think the concern we should all have about this amendment is that it represents more of what got us here and kicks the can down the road into the long-term plan, which is not a magic bullet. I'm looking forward to the debate over that, but it is not a magic bullet. This long-term plan suddenly won't immediately erase 
$12 billion of debt or years of avoiding difficult things. But this amendment will only make the challenges harder. So with that, we've completed this round of the process, and I'm going to... Vision. Yes. Very quick out of the blocks, isn't he, eh? It must have been like that in the footy field. Division to put this motion. And I'm calling upon my assistant here, Sandra, to carry out the division, if that's OK. Councillors, you're voting on the amendment from Councillor Foley. Councillor Baker. No. Councillor Bartley. Four. Councillor Dalton. Four. Councillor Darby. Against. Councillor Ferry. Against. That's green. Councillor Filipina. Aye. Councillor Fletcher. Against. Councillor Foley. For. Councillor Henderson. Against. Councillor Hills. Against. Councillor Lee. For. Councillor Leone. For. Councillor Newman. Against. Councillor Sayers. Against. Deputy Mayor Simpson. Against. Councillor Stewart. Against. Councillor Turner. Against. Councillor Walker. Four. Councillor Watson. Four. Councillor Williamson. No. Mayor Brown. No. So that is lost, eight votes to 13. I think in the interests of personal health, we will have a break. Your Worship, I'd just like to move my amendment. The seconder is Councillor Bartley. That's fine, OK. Thank I think you. We, we just go straight to moving because the debate is pretty much the same. OK. A point of order. Point of order. Uh, sorry, I already adjourned the meeting, so we will do that when we get back. OK, thank you. Uh, how long is the adjournment, please? Discretion. Is it, is it lunch or is it cup of tea? Is Come back at one, please. Okay. <laughs>